Okay, hello YouTube, what is up? Hot MTG player here. I'm gonna bring you guys a little deck tech we've been working on. Um, this is the deck that I'm currently running when we go to like F and M's and uh, gameplay and whatever we're playing. I call it Firewater Pike because it's a blue red deck. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is me, Joseph, bringing you guys the deck tech. Just saying, hey. Um, so first thing, and you know, when, we, when we're done, if you guys want to tell us a, uh, like, tell me a few things, like you think maybe we can change or things like that, um, feel free to post in the comments or message us, whatever you want to do. So let's start the creature base. We're running four Delver of Secrets, obviously. They work very well because we're playing all instants and sorceries. Uh, four Invisible Stalkers, which work absolutely awesome with Rune Chanter's Pike, which we'll get to later, because this card is, like, one of the best cards out there right now, I think. Hexproof and unblockable. It's awesome. I really like it. Uh, this card comes in handy when you're trying to get through defenses and dealing those little, like chip away at them little. Or if you, like, you know, equip them with some Rune Chanter's Pikes, you get in for those big damage. I, in the little Friday night when we played, I played this deck at FNM and I went uh, 6 and 2, won 6 games, lost 2. And in one of my games, I played two Rune Chanter's Pike on my Invisible Stalker and, and I was able to pretty much swing in for about 27 damage and instantly win the game with this Invisible Stalker. It was pretty cool. The only decks I lost to were um, Black-White Tokens because I just got overran with tokens. He had like, I think he had 12 tokens out, four of which were flying, and I just couldn't do anything. He had intangible, two Intangible Virtues and an Honor of the Pure, and he just completely overran me in both the games we played. I, I won one game out of the three, but he just completely overran me and beat me with that. And the other game I lost to was uh, a blue-black deck. I'm not really sure exactly what kind of deck it was, but it, he at one point had three worm coil engines out against me, and I I was able to get rid of one and then get rid of another one. I mana leaked one, but he paid the mana for it. He had a lot of mana, and then he was able to bring it back. I think he used I don't know what he used, but he brought it back to his hand. I forget. I wasn't I'm not really sure, but. He played it again, and he uh, had three of them out there and just destroyed me. I did beat him one game as well, but the other game he won. The last game he was able to win by uh, way of just creature overrun, pretty much. Because this deck, you know, only runs 12 creatures that I'm playing, and sometimes it's hard to get those creatures out there, especially against really big creatures, because, you know, things like my sorceries and instants don't really, like, it's hard to get them off against, like, big creatures. But I did kill his Worm Coil. With it was pretty cool. I used uh, I think it was oh no it wasn't his born coil. He was playing. He played a Rune Scar Demon, and I used uh, two shocks and a Galvanic Blast to kill it for six damage. And he was just like, damn. <laughs> he just discarded his graveyard. It was a pretty cool play. Then uh, okay, so we'll move on to the next creature. We're playing Stormblood Berserkers. Four of them. Um, it's really good, especially with the Invisible Stalker. You know, you deal one damage. Play this. It becomes a three three. And when you attack, they have to be blocked by uh, two or more creatures. It, this came in handy very well against this mono black infect deck I was playing against. Um, beat him pretty bad. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's definitely a good card. I like it. But I, I've also been thinking, trying to find things to change it. I was thinking maybe like a Chandra's Phoenix, like putting two of those in there and still keeping two Berserkers. But the only ones like I can't, the, like the shop by me, I can't find any Phoenixes. Uh, they don't have any in stock, so that's a problem. Same thing with Vapor Snag. I wanted to play two Vapor Snags in here, but I couldn't find any in any of the shops by me, so I just put two unsummons in there. Uh, so four Rune Chanter's Pike, because obviously very, 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 very good card with this deck, because you're playing so many instants and sorceries that you can get in for a lot of damage. Like, like, like I said with my Invisible Stalker, I was able to swing in for like 27 damage. It was pretty late in the game. I had two Pikes on them. It was pretty good. Uh, yeah. So then we were playing four Incinerates just to deal that damage and get rid of creatures. Four mana leaks, you know, a little bit of control because you know, it's good to have to get rid of some things that are harder to deal with, like Shrine of Loyal Legions. That card pissed me off. <laughs> uh, four shocks, two damage. You know, you can potentially kill some creatures off with it. Good card. Two Galvanic Blasts. I was uh, originally running like two extra draw spells, like Think Twice, but I realized I didn't really need any more draw spells, so I put in two Galvanic Blasts for the extra uh, damage because that comes in handy. I'm thinking about maybe taking out two incinerates, putting two more galvanic blasts in, but I don't think I want to do that because I think the four incinerates are good for the three damage because, you know, you can always combo with them. And I think that incinerate's a good card, and I think two galvanic blasts is good. 
So then we're playing uh, four Gitaxian probes. Uh, it basically is a draw spell, you know, and then look at their hand to the early game to find out, you know, what I can do against them, what kind of like plans they can possibly make against me, uh, things like that. Pretty much just a draw spell here. That's all we're really using for it. Usually I don't pay the life unless it's really early game because, you know, sometimes I can't get creatures out there, especially if they're like decks with bigger creatures because it's hard to block. So yeah, I usually just get this out there early game, or I pay the one mana for it to just draw a card. And four ponders, definitely awesome with Delver. You know, make sure that you get it to flip, or if you're getting bad draws, you can play this to reshuffle. So awesome card. I love this card in the deck. Two unsummons. Uh, this slot was for Vapor Snags, but I couldn't find any, and I can't find any anywhere. Uh, I'd love to have some in this deck because they would probably come in handy a little bit more for unsummons to take out one of their like take take away a life from them. But, you know, Unsummon is still okay, I guess. <laughs> I was running two Silent Departures, but I just feel like Unsummon's better just because it's an instant, and I really don't need the flashback, so that's why I'm running Unsummons. But I'm hoping to get... I don't really know how I'm going to, but I want to get Vapor Snag sometime soon. <laughs> uh, then our mana, we're having uh, seven mountains, nine islands, basic lands just to get them out there, and then four Sulphur Falls. Dual lands in this deck come in handy quite a bit. <laughs> then also for this last spot, that was already 60 cards, but I went ahead and for for me personally, I threw in Koth of the Hammer just because I felt like it brought like the deck was already really good, but I felt like putting Koth in there sets it apart from everybody else who, you know, there's some other blue right blue red uh pike decks that people make and I just felt like I wanted to make it a little bit more of my own. Like I've already changed a few things, but I wanted to put Koth in there just because I felt like you know, sometimes I need like a bigger creature to help uh, to get more damage in, so I can play that 4-4 Elemental Mountain. And if I need more mana, you know, more red or something like that, he'll help there. And then also, if, you know, if I'm playing, I so far, in FNM, I never was able to use his ultimate, but I'm hoping sometime soon I can, because it'll come in really handy to be able to use his minus 5 ultimate to make all my, to make my uh, mountains be able to deal damage directly to creatures or players, because that'll help me a lot, especially with, you know, adding that onto shocks and galvanic blast and incinerate and stuff like that. So uh yeah that's the deck. That's our that's my uh firewater pike deck, my blue red pike. Um overall, you know, I really like the deck and you uh I hope you guys do too. You know, you feel free to use it. Uh, try to see how it does F and M. I think it'll be pretty good. Um also if you have any suggestions that you think I can make to make it even better, please uh please let me know. I would love to know. I'm always looking to make thing make my deck better. So, you know, message me, uh, message us, uh, comment on the video, and uh, if you want to see more deck techs in the future, uh, let us know what kind of deck you're looking for, and I'll do my best to get that out there for you. And uh, so, yeah, thank you. Let me know with uh, any, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I keep saying it, but I really want to know, like, what you guys feel like I can change this deck to make it better. I feel like there's uh, things I can change, and I would love to hear your take on it. So, thank you, and... Uh, See you later. Have a great day.